know why I'm so surprised by this. I mean, obviously, it's the thing that should have happened. I just didn't think it was going to happen because it's quite rare that people on the left actually go after people who are on their side. But alas, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle has resigned following the assassination attempt on Donald Trump's life. Now, just to fill you in a little bit, in case you're unfamiliar, or perhaps you didn't watch all of the congressional hearings yesterday, which I, you know, spent a lot of hours doing myself. Um, here's just a little bit of, of some of the vitriol and the poison that was spit. Shockingly, though, some of it was actually spit at Cheadle through people who are fellow Democrats, which you don't often see in Congress. Was this a colossal failure? It was a failure. Yes or no? Was it a colossal failure is the question. Yes or no? I have admitted this is a terrible This is a failure. yes or no series of questions. Was this a colossal failure? Yes or no? Yes. Was this tragedy preventable? Yes or no? Yes. Has the Secret Service been transparent with this committee? Yes. Would you say the fact that we had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today as being transparent, yes or no? I have always been yes eager to Yes or come no, you didn't want to answer the, the question. Committee. We had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today. That is not transparent, by the way. You stated earlier, Secret Service is not political. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, would you say leaking your opening statement to Punchbowl News, Politico's playbook, and Washington Post several hours before you sent it to this committee as being political, yes or no? I have no idea how my statement got out. <sighs> well, that's bullshit. NBC reported that at 5.51 p.m., 20 minutes before the shooting began, the state police informed the Secret Service of their concern. Now, the rally was not paused at that point, correct? No. And according to NBC, just two minutes later, at 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service notified its snipers about the gunman. The rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? No. This was taken two minutes before the shooting started. If you could turn up the volume. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have yeah. criminals. Right here. He's we on have the roof. Ma'am, that doesn't look like suspicious behavior. That looks like threatening behavior to me. And the rally wasn't paused at that point either, correct? I can tell you, as I stated earlier, sir, that the moment that the shift uh, surrounding the president were aware of an actual threat. That's a threat. Right there, the guy's on the roof and everybody's yelling at him Yes. And, and directing the officer's attention to him. The rally was not paused at that point, correct? We are currently still combing through communications and when communications were passed. Well, I can point you to this communication. It's two minutes before the shots started ringing out. I can, I can speak to you in generalities. No, no, I don't and want generalities, I, don't know I want all specifics. Of the communications the answer is no, you did not consider pausing the rally, correct? The people that are in charge of protecting the president on that day would never bring the former president out if there was a threat that had been identified. Well, they did, because we've now identified three points in the, in the 20 minutes before the shooting that the threat emerged. Let me point you to something else, uh, which is the building that the shooter was perched on, seen here. This building is called the AGR building. I'm sure that you're familiar with it. Um, it's no more than 150 yards from the stage where Donald Trump stood, yet the security perimeter was drawn such that the AGR building was placed outside of it. Director Cheadle, according to the Washington Post, the AR st AR-15 styled rifle used in the shooting had, had a range of 400 to 600 yards, and therefore the AGR building is, was clearly within rifle range of the stage, correct? Yes. Director Sheetal, can you please give me the names of the individuals who are in charge of your con op for the rally? I'm not going to release names. Can you give me today. the titles? And how no. many individuals? No. Nothing? We, we had a full advanced team that was responsible for the, advancing the How many the site. people are the final approval authority? 
there are a number of people Can that you give me a number? are engaged in approving the plan. Can you give plan. me a number? I do not have any information related to any second shooter. Okay, uh, the reason I asked that is because according to testimony from multiple witnesses, they did report that. And again, I, to my understanding, there were over 40 sniper teams that were briefed by the Butler ESU. And I wanna make sure that people are aware if you're saying that there's not another shooter that we are able to clear that information because from this whole entire briefing, it doesn't seem like much information has been able to get out to the American people. So I'm trying to dispel rumors as I'm sure you understand. There was a lot of fiery testimony, a lot of fiery questions. And of course there was, given what almost happened under her watch. I'm Jasmine Lane, by the way. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, comment your thoughts down below as well. One of the biggest frustrations I had throughout watching this, and it's one of my greater frustrations with politics in today's day and age, is just the level of bureaucracy. I will give Kimberly Cheadle some credit because, you know, she did apologize and she did take accountability to some extent. But when it came to so many of the questions that were asked, she was like, I don't know, not me, not my department. I don't know. I don't have those answers. I don't know. Maybe you should talk to somebody else. Even for her during her testimony yesterday, she was quite adamant that she was not going to be resigning. She was not going to get fired. The Democrats were going to have her back because she's pro-women and pro-DEI and, and all of the stuff that they're really pushing for on that side right now, which some people say could be the reason why some of this happened. I won't go that far, I, although obviously there was an immense failure on multiple levels that was truly completely avoidable. When you have a left-leaning government in charge as they hire all their friends and all these people to go and do all these things for them, and then that way, when something bad happens, you can't single-handedly put the blame on one person. There's all of these other levels of government and all of these other levels of approvals and people that are involved. And so it's almost like every single person can say, oh yeah, well, I was involved, but it's not my fault because there was like 10 other people involved too. And and that guy made that call and then that girl made made that other call there. So it doesn't, it doesn't fall on me. I didn't know. I may be the head of Secret Service, but I didn't know. I don't know any of these answers. You should talk to the FBI. Girl, you are the FBI. What are you talking about? And despite all of the questions that she evaded and all of the failures and steps that were taken that while they're underneath her watch, she claimed she knew nothing about and didn't have the answers to, she still had the audacity to say that she was the right person to lead the Secret Service and that she's done a great job leading the Secret Service. All I can say is it's not every day that there is a successful assassination attempt that is made on a former president or a president in general. And the only reason why Donald Trump is still here today is quite literally by the grace of God, not by the grace of what Secret Service and all of their detailing had to do. No, no, no because that shooter was there and they knew that it was a threat and they didn't do anything about it. Why? And their reasoning for not doing anything about it was because there was a sloped roof. I wasn't aware that people who are working for the FBI and Secret Service and even private contractors uh, suddenly had the balance and knowledge of a toddler on a roof. No, they are full grown humans, many of whom have decades worth of experience in all sorts of, of crazy environments and unpredictable situations. So that really doesn't check out. And the fact that she was not able to answer some of those questions certainly left a lot of us feeling very, very frustrated. But at the end of the day, she did finally do what was right. I highly doubt by her own hand. I'm sure it was something that she was pressured into because to me, I'm like, if you if you were going to resign, you wouldn't have sat there in Congress and said the whole time that you're the best person for the job. You would have just resigned as you should because something absolutely catastrophic, something so scary happened underneath your watch. You shouldn't be defending it. Obviously being on stage there and question the way that she was is a lot to handle. Mind you, you're also the head of the Secret Service, so you should certainly be able to handle it. But she did take accountability for something. She did admit that it was an, an immense failure. However, it was very fascinating to me that when Republican Representative Nancy Mace said that Cheadle should start drafting her resignation letter, she responded with this. Both sides of the aisle today have asked for your resignation. Would you like to use my five minutes to draft your resignation letter, yes or no? No, thank you. <clears throat> 
I also received this email from an individual who I know is very involved in the United States military, has been for decades. Um, I'm obviously not going to be sharing this individual's name, but in this email, they wrote, Miss Cheadle's assessment about the roof is simply not true. She could have secured it. And that means she is lying. And that fabrication suggests that something very dark and very dangerous is happening, which led to the near assassination of Donald Trump. Also, please note that according to standard operating procedures, that the Secret Service is solely responsible for everything within 1,000 yards of that stage. They go on to write, as CNN reports, the U.S. Secret Service claims to have ramped up the protection of Donald Trump weeks ago after the U.S. government got intelligence that the government of Iran was trying to kill the former president. That intel came from a human source from what CNN is calling a hostile foreign intelligence agency. That would mean that the U.S. government, probably the CIA, has a human spy inside the intel service of Russia, China, or Iran. The National Security Council or NCS was aware of the threat, meaning that at least the CIA, NSA, and FBI were as well. They repeatedly approached the Secret Service to make sure that they were still following the Iranian threat and adjusting protocols, meaning that it was a credible intel source offering a credible deadly threat. This is why the spokesman of the Secret Service claimed over the weekend that they ramped up protection of Mr. Trump weeks ago with additional resources. That includes more agents plus a assorted technology like drones. As we know that Friday, the Secret Service rotated out Trump's regular protective team with temporary agents. Some of those included women who were shorter and of smaller body mass than the president. And that is very unusual. Certainly not a step up in terms of better security. They removed several of the most experienced personnel and reassigned them to a fundraiser Jill Biden was attending the same day in Pennsylvania. Hmm, how fascinating. Almost as fascinating that certain media outlets live streamed Trump's rally for the first time ever that day. Additionally, the Washington Post and others have reported that the Secret Service deployed one or maybe two counter sniper teams with only one day's notice. That is unusual because normally they need two or three days to conduct proper security assessment as per their standard operating procedures. Third, the claim is also suspicious because the Secret Service was so short staffed that they asked local law enforcement to watch for threats within what's normally their responsibility in the 1000 yard perimeter. My source continues to write, if you've seen video or photos of the building, the slope of the roof is very minimal. In fact, it's far less than the slope on surrounding buildings that had counter snipers, both local PD and Secret Service. The point is that the evidence is clear that her answer is untrue. Nevertheless, let me restate another thing that Ms. Cheadle said. The Secret Service decided to secure the building not from the roof, but from the inside. And by that, we now know that she meant there were multiple local law enforcement and Secret Service agents inside of the building, including three snipers and multiple cops. And they were all looking out the windows and examining the crowd to identify threats. They saw him multiple times acting strangely, looking anxiously up at the roof, holding a backpack, and incredibly, he pulled out a rangefinder. This was observed, reported, and photographed 30 minutes before the shooting by the men inside the building. We know this now that it was passed on to the other police and Secret Service agents as it was happening. In fact, one of the snipers inside the building took a photo of of the future assassin when he pulled out that rangefinder. He then sent the photo to other law enforcement to flag the concern. But isn't it fascinating to know that Thomas Crooks was able to climb on top of the building that several law enforcement and Secret Service members were inside of with snipers to protect the event. They were inside of the building that he managed to somehow crawl on top of unnoticed 
didn't have a single problem with this sloped roof at all, actually. He was there for, for quite some time until he was spotted by onlookers. And in summary, this individual writes, first, he was able to bumble through the most unlikely assassination attempt ever, despite being surrounded by police, counter snipers, and high tech devices like drones, metal detectors, and security checkpoints. Or second, something far more sinister was going on around him that allowed his alerting behavior behavior and actions to go untouched. And at the end of the day, the director of the Secret Service, former director now, Kim Cheadle, is lying. There's no other charitable explanation. So now the question becomes, why is she lying? All right, how many, uh, how many Secret Service personnel have lost their jobs due to this colossal failure? At this time, none. <clears throat> How many Secret Service personnel have been required to take a refresher course on how not to let people shoot Donald Trump? Our personnel are currently operational. We are examining the facts of this investigation, and we will make the changes necessary. What time did law enforcement become aware that there was an individual on the roof with a clear line of sight to President Trump? I am still verifying timelines. Of course, uh, nine days in, you have no answers. How many minutes went by between the time law enforcement saw and took photos of crooks and the shooting? How many minutes? I am still verifying timelines. 57 time minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. I think it's going to be a very long time before the American people trust these representatives in government again because there, there's been a lot of really nasty stuff and a lot of very biased stuff that has come to light and it turns out that a lot of the people on the conservative side were right they were ridiculed and mocked for some of the things that they said the conspiracy theories that they had but in fact a lot of them were absolutely right I'm Jasmine Lane, and if you liked this video, be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button. It means an awful lot to have your support, and I love chatting with you, so definitely drop your thoughts in the comment section below.